In this video, we're going to be exploring elastic collisions using the PASCO wireless smart carts. So to begin this, we're gonna need a couple things. First, two smart carts, um, ideally different colors, uh, but if they are the same, that's okay. Um, also need four cart masses. Um, these will go on the two carts in varying combinations. Um, we have our dynamics track with end stops and feet. And then lastly, uh, we have a uh, to measure the mass of the uh, cart and mass systems. Um, so before we go into this, let's get into setup. One cart is going to be starting at the end of the track, um, stationary while the other cart will be somewhere in the middle. It doesn't matter exactly where. And we're going to be using the second plunger setting on the uh, smart cart. So there's one and two. Um, this will give us the uh, ideal amount of force um, for the collision. It won't give us too much um, that it will cause any jumping, but it won't be so small that it will uh, not be seen. Um, so with that, first scenario we're going to start with is one mass on each cart. And then we will measure and record those masses on the scale here. All right, so I'm gonna take the red cart, and place it on the scale here. We have 526.8 grams. All right, and then the blue one. And you wanna measure these because you don't wanna just assume they're exactly the same because they're not. The blue is 527.4. All right. Important to note that we are using the magnetic bumpers um, on these, which won't give us a perfectly elastic collision, um, but we'll model it very well still. And it, it actually brings up some fun uh, anomalies to look into. Um, so we're going to start by opening Spark View, and we're going to select Sensor Data, and we're going to open the Bluetooth menu. There we go. My red smart cart was already powered on, so it showed up. And to turn on the blue one. Okay. And we will connect the uh, red here. And just waiting for the blue one to show up. There it is. Now on this screen, we want to deselect um, a lot of these sensors because we're not going to be using them for this experiment. Um, so we'll deselect force on the red, acceleration on the red, and then gyro. And then on the blue, same thing. Turn all these off. And then we're going to turn off position and just track velocity. Um, and we'll just open up a graph here. So because I have two measurements, it's gonna open up two graphs. Um, I actually will actually we'll close this and we'll do separate pages. So we wanna add another y-axis to this because um, we wanna be able to display both velocities of uh, both carts at the same time, just for the sake of visual analysis. And on another page, we're gonna look at the momentum of the system as a whole. So we're just gonna have another graph and then I'm going to uh, create a calculation for the momentum of the entire system. Um, so first we need to declare some variables. We want the mass of the red cart and the mass of the blue cart. So uh, mass of red was equal to 526.8. And that's in, uh, well, actually, we'll do uh, 0.5268 because I want that in kilograms. And then Mass of the blue is equal to 0.5274, and that's kilograms. So now the uh, formula for momentum. The momentum of the system is going to be equal to the mass, mass of the red times the velocity of the red, 
close the parentheses, plus the mass of the blue times the velocity of the blue. Close parentheses. And the units here are going to be kilogram meters per second. And we'll hit done and hit OK. And then we will have on this graph, we'll display the momentum. And then on one final page, we'll do one more graph. And except this time, we will take a look at the uh, kinetic energy of the system before, during, and after the collision. Um, so the kinetic energy is equal to 0.5 times the mass of the red times the velocity of the red squared. And close that. And it's going to be plus the 0.5 times the mass of the blue times velocity of the blue squared. go and squared, close parentheses, and we'll just use the units, joules. And we'll hit OK, and then we can display the kinetic energy on this graph. All right, so now let's go back to page one with both our velocities. And before we get going on this, let's make sure that our sampling rates are set up correctly. Um, we're going to choose a common sampling rate so that the sample rate on both cards is the same. A minimum of 50 hertz um, because the collision is really fast. So we want to be able to see it. And then keep in mind, there are arrows on the smart carts that point in the positive X direction. Red cart is pointing this way and the uh, blue cart is pointing this way. But we want them to be facing the same direction. So we need to change the sign of the uh, sensor itself. So let's go into the blue and we need to change the sign. So now all velocity data will be flipped to reflect the same direction as the red. And we can close that. So now we should be all set. Put that there. And set the plunger to the second setting, set it up against the uh, end stop, and place the other cart relatively in the middle of the track. And so what we'll do here is we'll hit start. And so looking at this graph, um, we can see that the kinetic energy throughout the collision is actually very well conserved. Um, the way we can visually look at this um, is by investigating the other graph. When you just look at this, the starting velocity and the ending velocity of the blue car are almost the same. Because they're the same mass, um, we can almost neglect it. But if we take a look at the next graph, actually here, let's get the multi-coordinate points on here. If we take a look at the next graph, we can see here that the uh, momentum it's relatively a straight line, which is what we'd expect it to be. This tells us that the, tells us that the momentum of the collision is in fact conserved. Um, we will see that it does have a slightly downward slope to it, but this is natural um, because we're experiencing friction in these carts. So we expect to see some uh, loss in velocity um, over time. Um, and then lastly, uh, the more fun one to look at is the kinetic energy. Um, if we zoom in closely on this one, on this graph, we can actually see uh, exactly where the collision occurred um, by this dip here. This one actually looks really good too. Um, so we can see before the collision here, um, the red cart is moving. And what's happening here is the kinetic energy of the cart is going down. And what's happening is it's converting that kinetic energy into potential energy from the magnetic force between these two bumpers. And at this point, that potential energy that was built up is then re-released into the blue cart. But you can see we still have some losses. Um, like once again, this is due to friction and also possibly just the collision of the magnets um, 
magnetic bumpers themselves. Um, and so when you go ahead and do this further, you'll explore the other two situations where we have three masses on the blue cart and then run the same uh, collision. And then once again, with three masses on the red cart. And then you'll do the same kind of analysis here. Um, so with that, I hope you find this helpful.